All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. So in about two days from now, the Goku and Kid Buu Dual Dokkan Fest will be dropping on the global side of the game. So in today's video, we're going to be checking out uh, everything that you guys need to know about this release from the uh, unit details to their animations, the banners, the new category and all that good stuff to hopefully help you guys decide whether or not you want to spend your hard earned dragon stones to try and pull them or to save those stones for something else in the future. Now, real quick, before we get into it, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Madara Accounts. They offer stacked global token accounts with thousands of stones and lots of top tier units for very reasonable prices. So if that sounds like something that you'd be interested in getting for this upcoming dual dokkan fest then make sure to head down to the link in my description and if you see something you like you can use my discount code tiger for 20 percent off your entire purchase so once again that's moderate accounts go check them out and uh, with that said let's jump right into it so the first thing we're going to do before we take a look at the banners or the units is to watch the animations. So starting here with the, I think it's the Goku. Yeah, here we go. All right, so obviously this is not my first time seeing this, uh, or, or his animations rather, um, but it's been a while, and I gotta say, after coming off the new Raditz animations and then seeing this, uh, it's like a breath of fresh air, man. I mean, no disrespect to Raditz, right? No hate, but the level of hype between a Super Saiyan 3 Goku versus a Raditz it's just not really that comparable, in my opinion. So, uh, that is to say, his animations look amazing, in my opinion. And uh, now let's move on to the Kid Buu, who also has some very nice animations as well. So here, here we go. So there you have it, the new SDR Kid Buu animations, also super, super clean, super nice, better than Raditz as well. But once again, no disrespect to Raditz. They did their best with what they had, but Kid Buu and Super Saiyan 3 Goku are just more exciting characters, right? So uh, yeah, those are the animations. Feel free to let me know in the comments what you guys think about them, which one you like better. I would have to say I do prefer the Goku's animations, but in terms of which unit I'm more hyped for, um, I think it's pretty even, man. I think it's pretty even because it's been forever since we got a new Kid Buu, and I'm definitely excited to uh, add this guy my collection so from there let's pop over to the banners starting here with the 
uh, Goku banner, and as you can see, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven featured SSRs, which is not bad considering we do have two Dokkan Fest LRs here: the um, AGL LR Gohan and the LR Go Bros. And uh, aside from that, we have the Tech Gen Nemba, SDR Bojack, Int Gotenks, and the AGL Bardock, along with the new Goku. So this banner, as well as the Kid Buu banner, which you guys will see in a second, uh, I think they're not bad. I think they're not bad. In fact, you know, like compared to most Dokkan Fest banners, they're good, but they're not amazing. They're not really on the same level as you would expect as the upcoming 7th anniversary banner. So if you were wondering, you know, is this a better banner to summon on compared to the uh, 7th anniversary banners? The question, or sorry, the answer is absolutely not. Okay, the 7th anniversary banners are much, much better. But that is not to say that you shouldn't maybe still do some summons right now while saving most of your stones for the upcoming anniversary because um, even though these banners are not like top top tier they're still quite good right the Goku is absolutely broken he is insane the AGL Gohan is um, still really good his damage output is not quite as impressive these days because we have a lot of units that can rival or exceed him in damage output but his defense on longer events is still uh, top tier and then we have the LR Go Bros still some insane damage output defensively never been that impressive but still good enough for most events in the game and uh, Tech Janemba as you guys know is a bit of a disappointment um, I'm not gonna say he's an awful unit but I just think his design was very very strange so I'm not a big fan of him, but he is a good tank, and uh, he has a decent leader skill. So he's by far not the worst unit you could pull. And uh, STR Bojack is a beast. It's really hard, good defense, um, great on long events, and also good support as well. And uh, the Int Gotenks, I think, is actually fairly underrated. His damage is... Uh, quite high his defense especially after he transforms is also I would say impressive you know so even though he's not like a top 5 to UR top 10 to UR even I think he is definitely slept on by quite a few people and uh, I really like this unit and AGL Bardock um, has his uses against specific enemies like Wicked Bloodline but for the most part these days I feel like his numbers just don't really hold up so uh, I would argue he might be the worst pull on this banner, but it's between him or Janemba, I guess. And uh, even then, he's not actually that bad. I'm just talking about like compared to the rest of the banner. So uh, overall, like a 7.5, maybe even 8 out of 10 for this banner. And uh, jumping over to the Kid Buu, we have Kid Buu himself, and then we have the Int LR Cell, Fizz LR Blue Boys. AGL, uh, PyCon, Tech Ultimate Gohan, Tech uh, Exchange Boo, and finally the Fizz Beerus. So compared to the Goku banner, I think the value is maybe a little bit better. Maybe a little bit better. Um, Int LR Cell with the Link Level Update is actually pretty beastly, man. His defense was always good, and now his damage can kind of kind of keep up you know like he's not going to be hitting as hard as some of the more recent units but he does do some good damage uh fizz lr blue boys um they're kind of like somewhere in the middle of the pack for dokkan best lrs right now i'd say uh, i do think they're better than the lr go bros that's a personal opinion and uh they're still quite good still quite good agl pycon lots of great utility really good for you know super battle road or uh, Legendary Goku event if they're Dragon Ball history, so I mean it's mainly the active skill that I really like. It's basically a free Ghost Usher, right? So a very useful unit. Tech Ultimate Gohan, you guys know he is still at least top 10 for TURs. Uh, his stacking is just off the charts, so for long events he is just ridiculously, ridiculously strong defensively. 
and offensively. And uh, for the exchange, Boo, I think he is solid. Um, not like as good as the Go Tanks, but you know, good damage reduction, some decent damage. Uh, just not a right unit overall. And then for the Fizz Beerus, still good damage, I would say. And defense is not that bad, but you know, he's he's kind of like the HL Bardock on the other banner. Not a bad unit by any means, just kind of uh, aged at this point. And hopefully both those guys get Extreme Z Awakenings sooner than later. So once again, uh, I would give this banner like an 8 out of 10 maybe. Slightly above the Goku's banner, 8.1, 8.2, somewhere in that range. Um, and for context, the anniversary banners would be like 10 out of 10s. Okay, so on that scale, these are 8 out of 10. Okay, so those are the banners. And now let's take a look at the units themselves. So we're going to start here with the Super Saiyan 2 Goku that transforms into Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Leader skill is Battle of Fate or Accelerated Battle. He plus 3, HP plus 130%, and attack and defense plus 170%. Obviously, not as impressive as the new 200% leader skills, but these guys came out before that meta was introduced on JP for the anniversary, so it's not really a surprise. But keep in mind that every single new Dokkan Fest unit that's coming out on JP right now does have the ability to give certain units 200% to HP attack and defense, right? And uh, before we move on, let's take a look at this Battle of Fate category, which according to the Dokkan Wiki, consists of characters who's uh, participated in the climactic battle of their respective sagas, which makes sense. So the leaders are the new Kid Buu, as well as the new Goku. And uh, as you can see, the characters that you expect to be here are present. We got like full power Frieza's, Super Saiyan 4's, Goku and Vegeta, uh, AGL Gohan, uh, LR O Frieza, LR Vegito, Intel LR Cell, the new Saiyan Saga, LR uh, Vegeta and Kaoken Goku are here as well. Uh, the Super Saiyan 4's from the anniversary also here. And uh, obviously I'm not gonna highlight every single unit, but we do have some really, really strong options for this category. And also a lot of TURs. Um, once again, you know, the Super Saiyan 4s are here, a couple of Frieza's, some blue Goku and Vegeta's, and uh, so on and so forth. Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is here as well. So, yeah, just a very, very solid category as a whole. Omega Shenron's here, um, you know, Beerus, and uh, Vegito Blue, Viz Vegito Blue at the bottom here. So, that is the uh what's it called again <laughs> battle of fates battle of fates category i think it's uh definitely one of the better categories one of the better new categories we've seen recently and the other leader skill he has which is accelerate battle is also really really good so overall good leader skill despite not having the uh 200 aspect right and his super attack raises attack and defense for one turn and causes immense damage with a medium chance of stunning. And his passive is key plus two and attack and defense plus 180% plus an additional attack and defense plus 50% when performing a super attack. Launches an additional attack that has a medium chance of becoming a super attack and high chance to perform a critical hit. And his additional attack and defense boost is calculated separately resulting in attack and defense plus 320% when performing a super attack. His uh, active skill is the transformation into Super Saiyan 3, and it can be activated when HP is 77% or less, starting from the third turn from start of battle once only, which is not too bad. And his links are Saiyan Warrior Race, Super Saiyan, Saiyan Lineage, Golden Warrior, Experienced Fighters, Prepare for Battle, and Fierce Battle. Categories are Majin Buu Saga, Super Saiyan 3, Pure Saiyans, Transformation Boost, Goku's Family, Kamehameha, Super Saiyan 2, Turtle School, Master Evolution, Bond of Friendship, Accelerated Battle, Battle of Fate, and Beyond Super Saiyan. Now from there, let's take a look at the Super Saiyan 3 Goku. His uh, super attack becomes greatly raises attack and raises defense for one turn. Immense damage with a medium chance of stunning. His passive is Key Plus 3. Attack and defense plus 200% plus an additional attack and defense plus 50% to 
when performing a super attack, launches two additional attacks, each of which has a medium chance of becoming a super attack, plus an additional attack plus 50% when attacking, and great chance to perform a critical hit for six turns from start of turn, high chance to perform a critical hit starting from the seventh turn. And his links are Saiyan Warrior Race, Super Saiyan, Saiyan Lineage, Kamehameha, Over in a Flash, Limit Breaking Form, and Fierce Battle. And just like the Super Saiyan 2 Goku, his additional boosts are calculated separately. So he gets attack and defense plus 350% when performing a super attack, and then attack boost up to 500% for 6 turns from start of battle because of this additional 50% attack for the first 6 turns. And on top of that, he has a great chance, which is a 70% chance to crit. And he also has the ability to launch up to 4 supers in a turn because of these two additional attacks that each have a 30% chance to become a super attack and he's greatly raising attack and raising defense on each of those supers for that turn so each super is just gonna hit harder and harder with the 70% chance to crit um, his damage output potential is just off the charts and his defense is uh, also really really good um, I'm not gonna say it's like you know golden Frieza level or anything like that, but he is definitely a really good defensive unit with just off the charts offensive capabilities, right? Like damage output potential. So that is your Fizz Super Saiyan 2 slash Super Saiyan 3 Goku, just an absolute monster of a unit. I cannot overstress just how good he is. Now moving on to the Kid Buu, we are taking a lot of time here, so I want to make sure we keep this video to a uh, somewhat reasonable length, you know? So, leader skill is Majin Buu, or sorry, uh, Battle of Fate or Majin Buu Saga, category key plus 3, HP and attack plus 170%, and defense plus 130%. Super attack raises attack and defense for one turn and causes immense damage with a medium chance of stunning the enemy. Passive key plus 3, attack and defense plus 180%, plus an additional attack and defense plus 30% with each attack performed up to 120%. Launches an additional attack that has a medium chance of becoming a super attack, recovers 20% HP at the start of turn, or rather at the end of turn in which an attack was received, and great chance of nullifying unarmed super attacks directed at the character. Active skill is attack and defense plus 20% in battle, and it can be activated when there is a Majin Buu Saga category enemy or after the character receives 6 or more attacks in battle. And this is a buff that lasts for the remainder of the battle after you use it. His links are Majin, Brutal Beatdown, More Than Meets the Eye, Big Bad Bosses, Infinite Regeneration, The Wall Standing Tall, Fierce Battle, and his categories are Resurrected Warriors, Majin Buu Saga, Transformation Boost, Artificial Life Forms, Maj uh, Majin Power, Planetary Destruction, Storied Figures, Legendary Existence, Sworn Enemies, Accelerated Battle, Worldwide Chaos, and Battle of Fate. And once again, his additional boosts are calculated separately, which means that he's actually getting attack and defense plus 84% with each attack performed, up to a maximum boost of attack and defense plus 516% with four or more attacks performed during battle. And then on top of that, you have to factor in the 20% attack and defense from the active skill. So you do not want to sleep on this Kid Boo, man. Even though he doesn't have a transformation, even though you know his passive doesn't seem as insane as the Super Saiyan 3 Goku. And I do think that the Super Saiyan 3 Goku is better than the Kid Boo, but this guy starts as Kid Boo and is better than the Super Saiyan 2 Goku. So I guess it really depends on what kind of event you're running, whether it's like a short to medium length event or longer event, right? But yeah, this Kid Buu is definitely also an amazing unit, and I would recommend that people go for both of them if you do plan to summon for this dual Dokkan Fest. Um, yeah, he hits really hard, gets a lot of defense, heals a ton of HP after taking hits, and also can nullify unarmed super attacks, so basically canceling out unarmed super attacks 70% of the time, which can be very clutch in harder events. And um, this active skill is actually insane. This active skill is ridiculously powerful. I mean, 20% attack and defense for the entire battle on top of this passive 
is uh, just a ton of attack and defense, you know? So, um, that's the Kid Boo, man. Yo, both these characters, like I said, are just amazing. Now, at this point, my hope is that you guys have been given enough information about these units, about their banners, their animations, the new category, and all that stuff to decide for yourselves whether you should be spending those hard-earned stones on these banners. But if for some reason you're still a little bit unsure, then my personal recommendation would be to go ahead and do at least one round on each of these banners because they are quite good, like I said, and the new units are just really hard to pass up because both of them are amazing. If you're gonna go for just one, then you probably want the Goku because he's just super, super fun to use and he's a monster. But the Kid Buu, like I said, is also not to be slept on. So that's why I say one round on each banner, that's gonna be three multis plus the free one. And on top of that, we should be getting tickets as always for, you know, Duel Duel Confess on Global. So you should have enough tickets to almost do a fifth multi for free and if at that point you don't pull them then it is what it is right that's just how it goes in gacha games and dokan so if you get unlucky and you can't pull them within the first rotation then i would say probably call it then but at least give it that one try right at least you know throw like 150 stones at each of these banners and then continue saving for the seventh anniversary which is um literally three months away guys just over three months away it's insane just how close we are so stay strong keep saving it'll be worth it but for the time being one round on each of these banners is not a bad idea that's my opinion that's how i feel let me know in the comments down below what you guys think and uh, whether or not you plan to summon for the goku and kibu or maybe just one and uh, how many stones do you plan to spend. Hopefully this video was helpful to those of you that were kind of on the fence about summoning or not or just unsure about whether these units were worth it. I do think they are worth the summon for sure and uh, as always if you liked today's video then make sure to like the damn video. Sub to the channel if you're new. Hit that notification bell so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content and until next time have an awesome awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.